Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Match It Together Market Watch. We have a lot to talk about again today, although I do think the market is a little slower this week compared to the last couple weeks, and that could be because some players are waiting to see what Innistrad Midnight Hunt is going to bring us. However, there's still a lot of activity in the market. Our threshold in this video is still $2 this week. We're not going to discuss a card unless it's moving at least $2 in either direction. And as always, we're going to skip any cards that are being egregiously market manipulated, although there's a lot less of that going on now compared to a few weeks back. Quickly before we get into it, though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Innistrad Midnight Hunt products there. They also have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use that promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated, so thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the Standard Legal Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that are Standard Legal moving the most this week. We only have two cards in the section today. They're both going down. The first is Goldspan Dragon, down 208 this week to 4181. This is losing some value after some rather significant increases over the last number of weeks. It does see playing in Standard Prismari Midrange. Jeskai Tempo, Rakdos Treasure, Pioneer, you'll find this in Is It Dragons. Also, this sees a lot more Commander play now. Good upgrade to the Draconic Rage Adventures in the Forgotten Realms deck. Also, I see people using this in fresh builds around cards from there, like Wolfgar of Icewind Dale and Clouth Unrivaled Ancient. On top of that, this is a good upgrade to another one of those new decks, Planar Portal. And in the same vein, I have seen people using this in fresh builds around Prosper Tomebound from there. And if that's not enough, this is a dragon. Dragon Tribal got a push from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. You'll find this in commander builds like the Ur Dragon or the new Tiamat. And this is in Clane Reclusive Painter decks too from that set. And our second card is Demilich. It goes down 243 to $10. Now it's a mythic from the most recent set. It is losing value. Doesn't see a ton of play. You're not going to see this show up in a lot of decks in Standard or Pioneer, for example. However, keep an eye on this card for a couple of reasons. First, it does see a little commander play. Sometimes it's in Xanathar Guild Kingpin, for example. Plus, there's three copies of this in a legacy deck called Galvanic Wizards that was made by Sean D. And that deck is catching on a little bit as a casual legacy deck. I don't think it was designed really to take down tournaments. It's kind of a cross between a storm deck and an aggro deck. It does seem like it's a fun deck. A lot of people have been trying to pick it up this week. In fact, we will mention it again later in the video. That takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. First, we have some cards going down in value. I see Manipulator. Now, this is the foil copy that comes in Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel. It goes down 215 this week to 1585. There was actually a post on an MTG message board this week talking about these early foils. And a couple foils from this product are going up in value. You're going to see those later in the video. This one, however, did spike a few months ago due to lack of high-grade copies online. Since then, it has been dropping. When it comes to gameplay, sure, Icy does see some commander play. Crucible of Worlds, the 10th edition copy, goes down 283 this week to 4546. This is not seeing the same amount of play it once did, but it's still around. You'll find this in Legacy Yorian Urza, Vintage Golo Stacks, and it does still see a good amount of playing commander. This is an Omnith Locus of Creation and much more there. Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, the copy from the list, goes down 322 to 3195. This did join the list with Modern Horizons 2. Also, this was reprinted recently in Time Spiral Remastered. It did spike last week, but retracts this week. Overall, the card has stayed warm, even with these recent printings, because it does play well in Commander with a card that was reprinted in Modern Horizons 2. That is Cabal Coffers. Regardless, though, this card also sees a lot of play in a lot of places. Pioneer, it's in Rakdos Pyromancer, Mono Black Vampire, sometimes Mono Black Aggro, and more. Modern, Eldrazi Tron, Yawgmoth Sacrifice, Orzhov Stoneblade, and more there. This also gets legacy play, and like I was saying, it's a big commander card in many decks, seeing more play now in Xanathar Guild Kingpin. Also, some players are getting this as an upgrade to Planar Portal, or putting it in fresh builds around Prosper Tomebound. First card going up in value is Revel and Riches. This is the one from Ixalan, up 211 to 1919. The Mystery Booster copy a little more stable this week, but this one continues to climb at least somewhat significantly. And this is another great upgrade to Planar Portal. Also, again, in fresh builds around Prosper Tomebound, 
Plus, many times you'll see this in Commander Kalein Reclusive Painter builds, too. Sigarda's Aid. Now, this is the newer copy from the Commander Legends Commander deck arm for battle. It goes up $225 to $10. The main reason this is increasing as much as it is this week is because there are typically four copies of this in the modern Hammer Time deck that is a very popular and successful deck in this new modern meta. Plus, this also has seen more Commander play recently. It's a good upgrade to Aura of Courage, and some players are putting this in fresh builds around Galea Kindler of Hope. Also, it's a new builds around cards from the regular set. Burner Battlehammer and Minsk Beloved Ranger. Pithing Needle. This is the one from Saviors of Kamigawa. This goes up 285 to 1495. And of course, we talked about this a lot recently when Modern Horizons 2 came out. There was a shakeup in the modern format. And when a format gets shaken up, two types of cards tend to get especially hot. Lands and sideboard cards. They cross over into a number of different decks, especially these colorless sideboard cards. You're going to see a number of those in the video today. Now, with that being said, this one in particular is a popular modern sideboard option. You'll find this in Hammer Time and many other builds. Also, this gets legacy and vintage play and can show up in main decks in those formats. Additionally, sometimes this is in Commander. I have seen this in some new Oswald Fiddlebender builds. Steam Vents, the original from Guild Pack, goes up 381 this week to 3449. And this is a land that got a push recently from that modern meta shakeup. Although Shocklands were reprinted not too long ago in the Culture Shock Secret Layers. Regardless, though, this copy's still going up. Like most Shocklands, it sees playing Pioneer, Modern, and Commander and builds old and new. Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, the copy from the list that was there through Cal Time. It goes up 402 this week to 3450. In Pioneer, you'll find this in Mono Green Ramp, sometimes Mono Black Vampires, and more. Gets a lot of Commander play, especially in Mono Color builds. It is seeing more play now in Min Wily Illusionist decks there. Sarkon Unbroken from Dragons of Tarkir, up 478 this week to 1663. Like I mentioned earlier, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms really did push that Dragon Tribe and Commander. You're going to find this in builds there, including the Ur Dragon and Tiamat. And we'll end this section with a dragon, and this one moving for the same reasons the previous card was moving Dragon Lord Dramoka. Now, this is the copy, though, from the list. Just join the list with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It is trying to find its price point going up 817 this week to 4849. All right, that brings us to the modern legal spotlight. Again, let's look at some cards going down first and then we'll see what's going up in value. Misty Rainforest, the copy from Zendikar, it goes down 386 this week to 5799. Now, enemy fetch lands have seen an increase in demand with this modern shakeup as well. However, they were reprinted in Modern Horizons 2 and they have been soft since then. Now, like most fetch lands, this does see play in modern, legacy, vintage, and commander in builds old and new. Cabal Coffers, the copy from Torment. This is going down 423 this week to 4574. However, there is another copy going up in value. You're going to see that in a few minutes. Like I said earlier, this did get reprinted in Modern Horizons 2. Since then, these other copies have been soft, with the exception that you're about to see. Now, remember, when this card got reprinted there, it did become modern legal, but I haven't really seen it do all that much in modern. With that being said, it is a great commander card, and it's getting more play now in Xanathar Guild Kingpin, Prosper Tomebound, and it's a good upgrade to Planar Portal as well. Lord of Atlantis, that copy from Time Spiral, goes down 476 this week to 2523. This is in Modern Merfolk, but that deck has been seeing less play over the last few weeks as the meta solidified. This is also in Legacy Merfolk, and of course you're going to find this in Commander Merfolk builds too. Twilight Mire from Eventide. This goes down 626 this week to 1924. This card spiked not too long ago. Has been retracting recently, however. It is one of those lands that got hot because of that modern meta shakeup. But again, now that the dust is settling, basically it's really only showing up in one deck there for the most part, and that's Yawgmoth Sacrifice. It is a big mana base card in Commander, however. Engineered Explosives. This copy from Fifth Dawn goes down 766 this week to 5545. The other copies are pretty stable. This one did spike last week, so basically you're just seeing a price adjustment here. Now when it comes to gameplay, this is another example of a solid sideboard card in this new modern meta. Also gets a good amount of legacy play and a little commander play too. Polluted Delta. Now here we have another fetch land, but this is an ally one from Onslaught. It goes down 978 this week to $115. It has been spiking pretty aggressively recently, so it's not too surprising to see a retraction this week. And the last card going down in value is Renin 6. This is the copy from the list. It's down $50.09 this week to 
This did leave the list with Keldheim. And even though this one's going down a lot, it did spike pretty aggressively last week. So again, I think you're just seeing a price correction here. And there's another copy, which you're going to see in a moment, that is going up in value. So what's going on with this card? Well, in modern, it's seeing a lot of play. Four color control builds, scape shift, jun builds, niv to light, sometimes five color elementals and more. It is banned in legacy, but it does get some vintage and commander play. The reason, though, it's been as hot as it has been recently ties into an Innistrad Midnight Hunt preview. That card is Ren in 7. We've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. Many players are speculating when Ren in 7 comes out that Ren in 6 is going to see more play. Even if that turns out to be only a commander, it will definitely put more attention on the card. Now you might have heard of this card, Ren in 6 from Modern Horizons. This is going up 548 this week to 129.97. Sword of Feast and Famine. Now this is the copy from the Modern Event deck, a little bit harder to find online in good condition. It goes up 549 this week to 74.74. This, of course, has been a popular commander card for a while, but it is getting more play now. It's a good upgrade to War of Courage. It's in fresh builds around Galia, Kindler of Hope. This is also seeing some additional play in Xanathar Guild Kingpin and Dristo Urden builds in commander. And here's that other copy of Cabal Coffers, rebounding a little bit after some big losses. It's the one from Plane Chase. Goes up 686 this week to 6285. Cavern of Souls, the copy from Ultimate Masters, is jumping up 1911 this week to 11732. Now, this particular version of the card is a little dry online this week. I do think this is some inflation. I don't know if anyone really wants to pay this much for the card right now, but this could be an indicator of other versions of the card moving soon. First off, this is currently on the list. I think that's worth noting. It's been there since Cal time, but the card is seeing a ton of play in a ton of different places. Modern, it's in five color elementals, a very popular deck. Also in Amulet Titan, Urzatron, Humans, Spirits, Goblins, Merfolk. Also gets Legacy play, and it's in that Galvanic Wizards deck I mentioned earlier as well. Plus it gets a little Vintage play. On top of all of that, you know this is a highly played Commander card. It's in many different builds there, including Dragon builds, which are hot. One of those being Tiamat. But that's all about the past. What about the future? Well... We did get a little bit of a preview of the future recently as we learned more about Innistrad Midnight Hunt and Innistrad Crimson Vow. First off, we know the names of the four commander decks. The two that are coming out with Midnight Hunt are Undead Unleashed. Looks like that one most likely is a zombie tribal deck. The other deck that's coming out with that set is Coven Counters. And then with Crimson Vow, we're getting Spirit Squadron, sounds like a spirit deck, and Vampiric Bloodline, which sounds like a vampire deck. Plus, there has been a preview card already that is a great zombie tribal card. This is going to be an Innistrad Midnight Hunt. It is Champion of the Perished. Put all of that together, and Cavern of Souls is definitely a card to watch. Chalice of the Void. This is the one from Masters 25, going up 3121 to 9999. And here's another example of the other copies are pretty stable. This one, though, is jumping up because this particular one is dry online this week. Again, I do think there's some inflation here. But it is a card to watch because it is seeing a ton of play in this new modern meta in various builds coming out of sideboards. Also gets legacy vintage and a little commander play. And that takes us to the vintage spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in legacy, vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. Sure, there is still a lot of market manipulation that's occurring out there, so be careful. But I will say it's far less in the vintage market now compared to a few months ago, which is good news. On top of that, I remind you of this every week, but just real quick in case you're new to these videos, the vintage market, especially the older, more iconic cards, tend to see more graded cards for sale and being sold, which means when you go to your price tracking websites, that price you see, typically, at least for some cards, is going to fall between a high-grade raw and a high-grade graded copy. Now, the prices I put up on the screen in this section are very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. So anyway, let's see what's happening. First, we have Berserk from Conspiracy Take the Crown. This is up 552 this week to 4203. Solid commander card has been for a long time, but now this is another one of those cards that is showing up in that Legacy Galvanic Wizards deck I mentioned earlier. There's four copies of this there. Lion's Eye Diamond. This goes up 640 this week to 599.50. You'll find this one in Legacy Carn Echoes, Doomsday, The Epic Storm, and more. Also see some commander play. We have a lot of unlimited cards that are hot this week. Rock of Courages, this is going up 1085 this week to 6191. Earthquake from Unlimited of 1322 to 13698. Counterspell from Unlimited of 1961 to 7999. 
This just got a reprint with the original art in the Artist Series Mark Poole Secret Layer. And this card did as well, Howling Mine from Unlimited. This goes up $20 to $179.99. Sulkinar, the Swamp King, this is the one from Legends, up $20.20 this week to $199.94. Underground Sea from Revised, up $21.29 to $949.99. Flying Carpet from Arabian Nights, up $24.50 to $123.50. Bottle of Suleiman from Arabian Nights up twenty six forty four to one forty four seventy. Shiv and Dragon from Unlimited up forty two forty to two fifty five. Pyramids this is going up forty eight seventy to four twenty five forty five. Winter Orb the copy from Unlimited this has been hot recently up fifty six oh eight this week to two thirty six ninety five. Hazazan Tamara this goes up sixty one ninety eight this week to three eighty nine ninety nine. Quorum Trench Gnomes up seventy nine ninety to one twenty nine ninety nine. All Hallows Eve up eighty three sixty to seven eighteen. If Biff a Freet, this is going up eighty six twenty six to three fifty three thirty six. Surrender Biff Freet, this is the original one from Arabian Nights. This is going up ninety six thirty to seven eighty nine ninety nine. And as you can see from the section, it's not just about reserve list cards. There are collectors that want these old iconic cards in high grade, and they want to get them graded. And the last card in the section is Scrubland from Unlimited. It goes up 102.49 to 1,099.99. I will tell you, high grade raw copies can now approach $1,000. I haven't seen any high grade graded copies sell for a while, but I assume next time one does, it's going to surpass this price by quite a bit. The best of the rest, also known as the Commander Spotlight in disguise, because Modern has been such an influencer recently on card prices, I did want to broaden what we look at in this section at least for a while. And I did change the name temporarily. Although I will say most of the cards in this section are moving at least in part because of Commander. First we have Volrath Stronghold. It goes up 220 this week to 12820. Solid Commander card. I have seen these in some of the Prosper Tomebound builds. It is expensive, but if you have a copy, it is a decent upgrade to Planar Portal. Greater Oromancy. Do I see a Shadow More Rare that's had to be reprinted? I think I do. I haven't used my one per video in a couple weeks now, so I think I gotta do it here. Now, there was a time period of magic, maybe you heard this before somewhere, when we had a recession in the game, and less packs were cracked. So rares from that time period, if they haven't been reprinted elsewhere, they tend to get a little spiky when people pay attention to them, and this is an example of that going up 227 this week to 8211. Now, this is in the modern Enchantress deck, that's why a lot of people are looking at it now. It's also good in Enchantment Heavy Commander decks. Blood Chief Ascension. This does see a good amount of commander play in various builds. It goes up 244 to 2880. Wrath of God, the copy from Portal. This one is a little dry online this week in high grade, which is why it's going up 246 to 1948. But it is a good commander board sweep, and I have seen this used as an upgrade to Aura of Courage and also put in fresh builds around Galea Kindler of Hope. Karn Liberated from Double Masters up 252 this week to 3364. This is in modern Tron. Also gets a good amount of commander play. It's in Kozilek, The Great Distortion, and more there. Michael Off. This is the copy from Plane Chase 2012. Again, a little dry online this week. It's going up 264 to 799. Popular commander card, though, in Chatterfang, Squirrel General, and more. Now, this one is not a popular commander card because it is banned there. Telerian Academy. It goes up 268 to 179.99. However, it does see vintage play in Golo Stacks, Paradoxical Outcome, and more. Stand Still from Odyssey up 277 to 1183. Now, Legacy Standstill decks have been very popular. There's also a Vintage Standstill deck where you'll find this, of course, and it does see a tad bit of Commander play as well. Emrakul of the Eons Torn, the copy from Ultimate Masters, goes up 298 this week to 5191. And this is another card that is banned in Commander, so you can't blame that format for the increase. But this is seeing some more modern play. It's in Control Builds. Glimpse Cascade, sometimes there's this kitchen and more there. Many times you do see this come out of the sideboard against Mill in that format now. In Legacy, it's in Doomsday, Mono Green Cloud Post, Sneak and Show, Omnitel, and Enchantress. Sword of Fire and Ice, the Dark Steel copy up 265 to 6353. The Modern Masters copy is up 304 to 6602. So this is in Modern Stoneblade builds, Death and Taxes. It's also in Legacy Death and Taxes and Orzov Stoneblade there. Plus, it is a big commander card. Seeing more play now is an upgrade to Aura of Courage, also in fresh builds around Galea, Kindler of Hope, and it's in Dristo Erd Index many times, too. Bloodstained Mire. Now, here's an Onslaught Fetchland still going up in value. It's up 314 this week to 8584. 
Uba Mask up 346 to 1988. This is another card that's a good upgrade to the Planar Portal Commander deck. Also, again, in fresh builds around Prosper Tonebound. And I've seen this in some Oswald Fiddlebender Commander decks, too. Darkness from Time Spiral. The Legends copy is pretty stable this week. This one is still going up, though, 375 to 3448. And this is in some of the modern mill builds, which is why it has been hot recently. That deck started to see more play since Tasha's Hideous Laughter came out in Adventures of the Forgotten Realms. Also, this gets a little commander play, too. Tarmogoyf. This is the copy from the list. It goes up 386 this week to $45. It was only on the list during Modern Horizons 2, just a short time. But it had a pretty low price point about two weeks ago. Since then, it has adjusted up to maybe what you would expect to pay for a card like this. In Modern, you'll find this in Jun builds, Death Shadow builds, and more. Also sees a little legacy and some vintage play. Occasionally, it might make a commander appearance as well. Preacher from the Dark. Now, this can see a little commander play, but the main reason I think it's going up is because it is a reserve list card from the Dark. And even though those aren't as hot as they were a few months ago, every once in a while, you'll see one pop back up again. Now, in this case, it's going up 387 to $94. However, it has been losing some value recently, so this is more of a slight rebound. Necropotence, the copy from Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel, only found in foil. I mentioned at the beginning of the video we'd see a few more of these early foils. This one's going up 390 to 129.99. This is in Vintage Doomsday. This also gets a lot of commander play. Archive Trap, the copy from the list that did join the list with Strixhaven. It's going up 406 this week to 39.24. There are four copies of this in the main of the modern mail deck. This also gets vintage play in Golo stacks and more. Plus, it does see a little commander play, too. Blood Moon. This has been pretty hot in general. Various versions of this card seem to be going up every week. This week, it's Modern Masters up $233 to $25. Ninth edition up $407 to $35.98. This gets a good amount of main and sideboard play in Modern. It's in Is It Tempo, Crashing Footfalls, Mono Red Aggro, Gruel Midrange, Enchantress, Blitz, and more. Also, this continues to see a lot of Legacy play, and it is seeing more commander play now. It's in some of the Inferno of the Star Mounts decks. Death Coil Worm. This is yet to be reprinted. A little dry online this week. Sees a tad bit of commander play, but I think this is mostly going up due to collector interest and inflation. It goes up 433 this week to 1499. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage. This recently gained that Phyrexian creature type, remember? It goes up 447 to 11661. Now, the reason it's moving like this, however, is not really because of the creature type but because it is seeing a little more legacy play now with Dress Down from Modern Horizons 2. This is also getting a little more commander play as well, sometimes in Dristo Urden builds. Fracture and Gust from Shadowmoor. This goes up 450 this week to 1499. Recently, this was reprinted in the Showcase Strixhaven Secret Layer. This is another good modern sideboard card. It's useful against Urza Saga, which is in a lot of builds right now. This is also good against Enchantress or decks leaning hard on artifacts like Hammer Time, for example. Plus, this sees a little commander play as well. And here's one more foil-only card from Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel. It is Lurgoyf of 451 to 1238. This is hard right now to find in good condition online. It does get a little commander play. Nature's Will. This is a popular commander card in Ajila the Blade Blossom, and it's in some other builds too. It goes up 455 this week to 3455. Earthcraft, good commander card in Chatterfang, Squirrel General, and more. It combos with Squirrel Nest there. This goes up $6.99 to $206.99. Aggravated Assault, this Onslaught copy is still hot, going up $7.27 to $35.99 this week. Good upgrade to Draconic Rage, and in new commander builds around Wolfgar of Icewind Dale as well from that deck. Plus, sometimes you'll find this in Delina Wild Mage builds in Commander now too. Omen of Fire is next, and this might see some rare commander play from time to time. But it is a reserve list card that dried up online this week. Looks like it could be the target of a buyout. This is going up 733 this week to 1495. And finally, for the section, we have Survival of the Fittest from Exodus. It goes up 896 to 27895. Now, this is found in a lot of different commander builds, but Alpha Investments did mention this card in a video this week. The video wasn't about this card, but the title of the video was Survival of the Fittest, and it was mentioned in the beginning. Could have brought some more attention to it. All right, that takes us to the premium spotlight, and I say this every week. There's so much happening in the secondary market when it comes to premium cards. We can't possibly cover it all, but I like to pick a handful of cards that are moving for a good reason, like either there's some kind of 
deck that they're in that's pushing them, or some news or a preview card that's moving the price, as opposed to talking about cards that dried up in the marketplace or were just bought out. Remember, too, there's still a lot of market manipulation happening in this premium market. Not as much as we were seeing, but it's still out there. So if you're making any purchases, be careful. Do your homework. In this section, again, much like the vintage section, the prices you're going to see are reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. But again, if something doesn't line up with true sales, I'll let you know. Greater Oromancy, that foil from Shadow Moor, up $10 this week to $135. I have seen high-grade raw copies of this sell at this price point and sometimes for slightly more. Sarkhan Unbroken is back. Two copies to talk about. The foil from Dragons of Tarkir went up 1972 to 3897 and the one for more of the Spark Masterpieces is up 5223 to $95. Okay, are these prices for real? Well, here's what I found, starting with the foil Dragons of Tarkir copy. High-grade raw copies are selling for about $20. When it comes to the Masterpiece, high-grade raw copies have sold recently for about $57. So quite short of the prices you see on the screen. This could be an example of sellers trying to stay ahead of an aggressive spike, though, and pricing the cards higher than they might even expect to get for them, just so the spike doesn't overtake their price point and they end up losing money on it. So that being said, these sellers usually will accept a reasonable offer, but this practice can skew data a little bit. However, this card is moving fast, so keep an eye on it. Who knows, maybe a week or two down the road, these prices might seem a little more legitimate. And finally, we have Survival of the Fittest. This is the Judge Foil. It goes up $702.51 to $1,999.99. Is that price for real? Okay, first off, you don't see a lot of these selling at any given time, so keep that in mind. It is hard sometimes to pin down a good price for cards like this. High-grade raw copies, though, I have seen sell for about $1,000. Asking prices, though, on the copies that are left out there are much higher. Again, maybe you have a case where there's sellers just trying to fish for an offer. The other piece of the equation is when we do see a high-grade graded copy sell, perhaps it could approach this price point. All right, that does it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.